All right, something else you'll see in Markdown posts like this is what they call front matter. And this is displayed in key value formats inside of these dashes. And so now any type of uh, key value pairs that we put in here, we'll have access to when we go ahead and get that content. So I'm gonna throw some values in here. We'll say something like title is equal to hello world. And again, it's pretty much the same, but description. Now I can control what this description is. Uh, so let's just paste in a few more here and we'll see what this looks like. So now I have a description. I have a date when this was published. I have a cover photo. So for this particular blog post, I'm going to use this cover photo. And this will allow me to create a really nice landing page with some cool looking designs for each of the blog posts. And then I have some tags. So we're going to display each of the tags at the bottom of the blog post. So, so far, so good for that. Um, let's go ahead and fix this part. We're gonna add the tags to uh, the blog post. So for each individual blog post, we have this main section, and then we're going to display the um, tags. Now, I don't really need this because this is really considered, I already have a main tag. And what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and loop over the tags and display them. So the way that I can do that is I need, and actually we're gonna back up a second. So this was really great if all I wanted to do was display the information from the uh, markdown file. As soon as we introduce more data, like we did with the front matter, we need access to that front matter and there's no way to get it out of this. So we need to go ahead and change something here. So if we go ahead and say script setup, um, if we go back to the documentation, let's check out um, rendering. So there's two uh, components that come out of the box, the content doc one, which we just looked at, and then content render, which allows us to render the markdown document returned by query content. So we automatically got the content before, but now we're gonna actually query the content and figure and get that out of there. So the way that we can do that is we can say const path is going to be equal to use route, and we're just gonna get the route from that. And the reason we're gonna get that route is because now we can query this. Uh, we're gonna get the data out of there. We're gonna say um, await, and there's a use async data. And the first one is going to be the key. So we're going to say content uh, slash path. And actually, this should be backtick and a backtick. So there's our key. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say return query content uh, with the path. So the path is going to be a, uh, in, oh, actually let's do this, query content, and then we're gonna just say uh, where, um, and then we're gonna say where the path is equal to path, right? And then we're just gonna say find one, because we could do this to find a lot, uh, we're just gonna find one. So now that we have that, we're just gonna change this to the content renderer component, we need to pass it a value, which is going to be the data that's coming back. And then we still have our pros, and I may add, um, say, a margin, uh, MX auto, max width of 7XL. Okay, so now let's see if that's still rendering uh, what we expect it to. Uh, const path is equal to that. What did we miss here? Ah, okay. All right, uh, you should use slots with content renderer. So we did content renderer, value equals data. Here's our class. We are returning query content find one. Okay, that looks all good. Did we, let's try this again. All right, not sure quite what was wrong there. I think I just had a typo. Um, but now we're pulling that back with content render, 
and we have all of the same data. But now the real power comes in is with that data, I'm going to get all the front matter. So I can have access to that front matter. So what I can do now is come down here and say for tag in data dot tag. So data is going to bring all the content back and then we have access to any front matter that we've declared. So data.tags is a list um, and we can iterate over that and we could say um, I want to link to slash blog slash tag slash tag. Now we're not setting this up, I'm just creating a link. Um, this is just a, a link to that. And then we can use an icon. So we're using icon from Nuxt icon. So if we save that and we come back, now we have a tag. So pretty cool. Um, Continuing on with this, I want to go ahead and create two more um, blog posts, if you will. So let's go into our content, into blog. I'll say um, next3intro.markdown. I'm going to paste a bunch of content in there. Again, we're going to have our front matter. And then I'll create one more um, called view3. This is just the view3 that three announcement. Um, so let's say new file view three three dot md and we'll paste that in. So now if we go to hello world we can say um, slash next three intro and there's our next three intro blog post with our nice syntax highlighting and we can also go to view three three and there's our announcing view 3.3 blog post. And again, everything is highlighted underneath blog. So what we need to do now is create a page where we can display all of our blog posts. So how do we do that? So let's go back, close all this up. And under pages, under blog, we have this kind of catch-all, but we want a root one. So we want to say index.view. And this is where we are going to um, create that. So let's start with a script setup. And we're going to do something similar uh, that we did before. We're going to say const uh, data posts is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to await use async data. The key is just going to be posts. And then let's go ahead and say we want to query content. So anything in the blog content. So we could have multiple thing, multiple types of content. We could have one for like marketing, one for like our newsletter, which I do personally. I have something like that. Um, so we have slash blog. And then we can just say find. So that's basically going to find all. Okay, so with that in place, we can... Um, Let's go ahead and just add some template here to kind of show this off. Um, but let's get rid of this for now. So now I have this blog post header. I have a little bit of text about uh, what, what I'm doing with the blog. And then I have a section where I'm going to display my blog post. And actually, let's just get rid of this for now. And um, Let's just go ahead and display these in, actually we don't even need a section for this. Let's just start with an unordered list. So I'm gonna start with an unordered list and I'm gonna say um, li v4, so I wanna say for post in posts, the uh, key is going to be, um, I'm gonna use the post dot, I think that will work, post.id. And what we want to do then is I want to add just a class here with some margin and a little bit of padding and maybe a border bottom of two. So we have our li and then inside of there we want to create a link to it. So we're going to use next link. So that is the built-in component and what we want to link to is the um, post dot underscore path. We're gonna add a class to that to say text blue 500 text to Excel. And then we'll just display the post dot title, all right? 
And below that, what I want to do is display the description. So I'll say P class is equal to text gray 500. And then we'll display the post.description. Now again, that is coming from that front matter that we've declared in each of the blog posts. So if that works, um, let's try going back over to our site. And there's our blog posts, but nothing's showing up. Let's find out what's going on here. Hmm. All right. Uh, so we are data is posts. That looks right. Let's just go ahead and try to rerun this application. See if that fixes us up. And it looks like I threw in a couple extra curly brackets. That's okay. Um, now we have our three posts. So hello world, getting started, and announcing view 3.3. So if I click on hello world, here's our hello world post. If I click on getting started with Nux 3, and if I click on announcing view. So that is really awesome. This is displaying exactly what we want to do. But now what I'd like to do, if we go back to the live version of it and we go to blog, I want to display these posts using this kind of card format. So it has the cover image that we've defined in our front matter, title, description, and then a button that we can click on. And the reason I want to do this is because I'm going to use that same look and feel here on the home page to display the latest three. So what I want to do is turn this into a component. All right, so I'm going to start here by extracting this out to a component. So we're going to go under our components folder and we're going to create a new file and we'll call this post.view. And post.view is going to, let's see, script setup. It's going to take a prop. So we're going to say const props are equal to define props type is and actually we don't even need to get this specific about it we can just say posts all right so that's going to take in some posts and then what we are going to do with them is the same thing we did with them in the template before but now we've kind of componentized this so that we can reuse it uh, in different places all right so in index.view all I want to do now is go ahead and pull that in. And so I'm going to create a section here. I'm going to give it a class. And we'll just go ahead and inside of the section, I'm going to say post. I'm using the post component. And I'm going to pass the posts in. And that will be our posts object there. So that will change nothing at this point on our local host. 3000 blog, we're using the same kind of layout. But now what we can do is go into post and kind of update this so that it looks more like that card layout. So I'm going to go ahead and copy some code in here. Again, we're starting to run long and I want to try and keep this a little bit concise. So we're going to go ahead and in that place, we're going to create a div. So we're going to say for posts in props.posts, here's the key. We're setting a class of BG white rounded. And that's what's going to give us those rounded corners. We're going to have a shadow on it. And we're setting the overflow hidden um, for the um, cover image. So we're setting a, uh, on the hover, we're going to give it an opacity of 75. So it's going to give us this nice little hover effect. We're creating a next link for the image. So the image is going to go um, to post.path. So we have a link on the image, and then below the image, we're going to display the title, the description, and then a read more button, which you're going to be able to click through and view the blog post. So let's look at blog posts. Um, OK, so far so good, but we can see that it's a little big. And that's OK. We haven't fixed this yet. So the post.view is working fine. But what we want to fix is back here on the index, we have the section, and I want to set up a grid layout. So I'm going to say grid um, on a medium. I'm going to say the grid calls is 3. Uh, margin top is 8. And I'm also going to set a gap of 10. 
So with that, now we have this nice little layout and it's also responsive. So as we start to go down, when we get to that break point, we're going to now display it in just a single column. Um, this looks really good on smaller form factors, but as we get to that larger window, we want to kind of display those in three columns. So perfect. This looks good for the blog page. Now I want to go back to the home page and do something similar. So how can we do that? Let's go back to home. And on home, we have the section with this H2 that is saying blog posts. So it's going to look pretty similar. Um, but we need to query our content now. So how do we get our blog posts? And we can't just get them all. We want to get the last num X number of posts. So again, going to look pretty similar to before. We're going to say um, data is posts is equal to await. Again, use async data. We're going to give it a um, key of, say, latest posts. And what we'll say is that we want to query content. So we're querying the blog just like we did before. Um, instead of using where, we're now going to sort. And what we're sorting by is the date. So because we added that as front matter, to the uh, each blog post, we now have a key that we can sort on, right? So I'm going to sort on the date. I also want to limit the amount of posts we get back to three. And I want you to go ahead and call find on that and return them all. So that will give us what we need. So once we have the posts back, we can go ahead and display them here. So I'm going to say div class. And again, this is going to look pretty similar to the um, blog post page. So in this instance, I would almost create like a blog post listing component, but uh, we'll just keep this short and, and do this here. So I'm going to say grid, grid calls three, MT8, and gap is 10. OK, so with that, we can now say, hey, posts. Here's the post that you need to display, um, and that's posts. All right, so let's go back to our website and go to our home page. And we have our story here, and now we have our latest blog posts. And again, you can change this to whatever limit those latest blog posts are. Let's just say that I only wanted one there. I'm just displaying one. And also, because of the way that we kind of set this up, this will be responsive as well. So when we get on a smaller form factor, uh, everything looks good. So cool. Things are starting to come together. We've got our homepage working, our blog page working. It's time to move on to projects.